Following an uninspired period, hallmarked by the over-reliance of sequels and a strong focus on brand development, Pixar rocketed into a brand new era, which put heavy focus on returning to the original features that made them so special in the first place. With a series of unique films rapidly spawning, though with two incredibly well-received sequels sandwiched in the middle, audiences were left hoping that the studio had returned to peak form. Also notably marking the start of this new era was the departure of ex-CCO John Lasseter from the company. After workplace misconduct allegations came to light only a day before the era's first film, Coco, hit cinemas. While Lasseter initially announced a six-month leave of absence, in January 2018 it was announced that he would leave the company permanently, with inaugural Pixar creative and executive Pete Docter assuming his position. With Docter's appointment, a clear shift could be seen at the studio, not only within artist morale, but in feature output. The departure of Lasseter, perhaps a major catalyst behind the return to almost solely original features and a return to classic filmmaking philosophies. While this era does house films that are as well received, if not more so than those from Pixar's Golden Age, I'm reluctant to dub it a second Golden Age so prematurely, as this period still seems very open-ended. Currently framing six films, spanning 2017's Coco and their most recent feature, 2021's Luca, this period is a seriously clear contender to be looked on in hindsight as one of the studio's most illustrious. While the ongoing worldwide pandemic had an enormous impact on the box office receipts of 2020's Onwards and Soul, as well as 2021's Luca, the latter two of which were dumped on Disney Plus without theatrical runs, this still remains a lucrative period, with the films almost accumulating $3.5 billion worldwide so far. In this video, I aim to rank the current five films from what I'm dubbing the new age of Pixar animation, including their newly released least Luca in order of my own personal preference. At that, let's get into it. Kicking us off at number 6, Onward. A movie that so beautifully encapsulates everything we've come to expect from Pixar, with a heartfelt story, fantastic characters, grand adventure bursting with soul, and of course plenty of enormous laughs. To me, Onward feels very different to anything Pixar has ever done before, and for some that may feel a little off-brand, but I think it simply shows a company that, after 25 years of releases, is still willing to grow and move in different directions, a prevailing thread through this era of films. In particular, the film fantastical elements, which are a lot of fun, feel quite unique for a Pixar movie. That said, the downside of the heavy reliance on these elements is that the movie falls into some pitfalls of the genre, at times feeling a little generic. Yes, there's twists and surprises, but beat by beat, while perhaps new territory for Pixar, the adventure feels somewhat predictable. Pratt and Holland are so perfectly cast in their roles and share incredible chemistry. The character animation is so stellar that every sense of their being is radiated, and at times it's easy to forget that you're looking at animation and not the two actors in Monster Makeup. Number 5 The Incredibles 2 this wasn't exactly the sequel most fans had been waiting 14 years for. It's one that splits the team apart, as Elastigirl goes off on her own thrilling adventure and leaves Mr. Incredible at home to look after the kids and take care of mundane household chores. However, for me, this totally unexpected and subversive take was the single most perfect thing Pixar could have done, and once more, shows the risks they're willing to take for the sake of telling great stories. By going this route, they managed to further the story and character characters while maintaining the heart, humanity and emotion of the original. There are a few downsides though. It has a very long runtime and occasionally falls into familiar territory, repeating a few of the same beats, jokes and moments from the first and featuring some fairly generic superhero stuff. That said, there does have to be something for everybody here and I think it's all part of its charm. Regardless, with such a huge time gap, it's clear that an enormous amount of effort and care went into making this the best sequel possible. At number 4, Luca. An absolute delight of a movie. 
bursting with pure radiance and the truest of souls. Luca may be one of Pixar's simplest efforts, but where it lacks in grandiose spectacle, it makes up for in small-scale intimacy, exploring ideas of pure friendship and hitting on themes of social prejudice and the longing to fit in, Luca is a much deeper and more meaningful piece than it may let on, packing an incredibly powerful punch. While the animation may not be anything groundbreaking, its warm and inviting colours make for a visual feast, and the European inspired art design adds a touch of uniqueness to this entry in the Pixar canon. When the movie does take a dive into more fantastical realms, it absolutely excels. Underwater sequences and daydream fantasies are filled with stunning visual design and absolute narrative joy. With a short runtime and its inherent simplicity, however, the movie struggles to flush out its characters. And while it is such a wonderful film, its minimalism does restrain it from reaching the peak of Pixar greatness. As a person of Italian heritage with family living in a small town who can appreciate appreciate the representation and cultural references, Luca certainly hits different for me. Coming in at number 3, Toy Story 4. If Toy Story 3 taught us that it's okay to move on, Toy Story 4 taught us how to move on and find closure. The movie feels like a coda or epilogue to the original trilogy that expands upon ideas and explores themes that were never truly fleshed out before. It takes loose ends and ties them up satisfactorily and diverges into the ramifications of where the third left off, touching on that last tangle of emotion that seemed brushed over in its finale. Naturally, it does take on a reduced approach, featuring the same grand adventure as the previous three, but on a smaller, more emotional scale, adding up to the most existential and emotional piece in the franchise. While this is smaller scale, it still feels like Toy Story, with great action, brilliant new characters, and some incredible comedy and gag pieces that live up to, and sometimes even outshine, anything from the originals. The focus on Woody and Bo I thought was absolutely superb, though I do wish we'd seen more of Buzz, Jesse, and the other supporting originals. Regardless, the love and care that went into this movie is obvious, with a heartfelt, emotionally captivating story told through spectacular animation. Coming in at number 2, Coco. After a period of uncertainty, Pixar roared back into form with a film so worthy of its heritage, an original tale so beautifully told and so richly presented. Coco is one of the studio's most enchanting and emotionally engaging pictures, a magnificent exploration of Mexican culture using its iconography, music and traditions to tell a richly layered story about family, love, self-discovery and following your dreams at all costs and against all odds through the eyes of youth. Coco is legitimately surprising and unique at every step of the way, with twists and turns that are truly unpredictable and story beats that tug on the heartstrings like only the Pixar greats can. The film's exploration of the afterlife and the eternal existence of the human soul and spirit is so incredibly well presented and so touching. It's perhaps Pixar's most extravagant, eccentric and dazzling film, a visual wonder with impeccable animation and tremendous color scapes that vivaciously leap from the screen, creating an immersive experience. With a wonderful roster of characters, each with their own emotional weight and importance, Coco is an absolute joy, easily one of Pixar's most delightful, inspiring and uplifting movies. And coming in as my number one favourite film of Pixar's new age, Soul. An absolute masterwork bursting with pure genius. In true Pixar style, it's a deep dive into the human psyche in the most meaningful way possible, deconstructing everything we know about life and everything either side of it. Utilising visionary designs that are quite simply like nothing that's ever been put on the screen, Soul is one of Pixar's most incredibly conceptualised films, both visually and narratively. Visuals and animation are absolutely gorgeous, and some of the best seen in any animation film. The film's stunning score, infusing blissful ambience and electric jazz make for a true transcendental and euphoric experience when combined with the film's pictorial landscape. Characters are built incredibly well, many acting as metaphors for various human conditions and emotions, kind of like what Inside Out did but in a much less on the nose way. The greatest thing about Soul however is that it's easily the most ambitious and boundary pushing film Pixar has ever pumped out. 
about, and one that certainly aims itself for an older audience over a child one. It's one of their deepest, most meaningful, most mature and most existential too, taking everything we ever knew about their storytelling to a whole new realm. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out my other Disney and Pixar animation ranking videos. I've ranked the entire Pixar and Walt Disney animation canon, and next up we'll be updating my ranking of all the Pixar animation movies. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to catch that and all my future ranking videos. And at that, it's over to you. Which new age Pixar films do you love the most, and which ones do you love not so much? Fire away down in the comments below with your own personal thoughts and rankings, but as always, remember Remember to stay civil to infinity and beyond. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.